which on one side is super hard for young families and first time home buyers to get into the market because you constantly have people that can afford more and maybe paying cash. So these inventory levels are something that I constantly try to research into to be able to give my clients the best insight into what we see happening in real estate. Welcome back to the Bamford & Co podcast. My brother Ryan is still on vacation. Seems like months, years. So I will be bringing on one of the hottest topics uh, today uh, that continually um, makes me think about where do we go in real estate. So the biggest thing that I've been looking at is inventory levels and affordable housing. So those are things that are constantly in the media and topics for the election and so forth. So it's where, what's happening and where are we going with those? So those are things that I'm constantly trying to figure out. And I mean, we've interviewed some different people on actually our podcast being Cam from the CEO of the, the um, Landlord Association and then Chris, uh, the CEO of the Saskatchewan Real Estate Association. And we're just looking at how does this look for Saskatoon and, and I guess into the future? Right now we have uh, inventory levels lower than what we have in, in a decade. And the same thing as inventory levels for rentals. So right now, how does that look going into the future? And where we're looking at that is that builders are using incentives to continually look into building into rentals. And a lot of them are getting out of building single family houses for sale. So with people migrating into Saskatoon, uh, from different places in Saskatchewan, that means it's going to be harder for you to find that perfect home that you've always dreamed about. Uh, the nice thing is, I guess, on the selling side, and for, for some reason, if you're leaving Saskatchewan, it's a positive because the property prices, I, I believe, are going to continually to increase, which on one side is super hard for young families and first time home buyers to get into the market because you constantly have people that can afford more and maybe paying cash. So these inventory levels are something that I constantly try to research into to be able to give my clients the best insight into what we see happening in real estate. The number one thing that we always say is stay in the market. So until you find that property, stay in the market, don't leave it and we'll help you navigate I guess the, the buying journey, which is a little bit different than it has for, for, I guess, the last decade. I mean, I mean, this is my 20th year in real estate, and I'd say it's probably one of the most difficult times that I've seen just because of inventory levels, and it's hard for people to find that, that next step. Um, I mentioned it on a couple other podcasts that patience is the number one thing that we're looking at continually, and uh, I think that's... Um, being patient and just understanding the, the, the market and understanding the, the neighborhoods that you're looking for. When we're looking at builders, one of the biggest things that we look at is the labor shortage. When we can't find the people to be able to do the work, prices increase and it makes it harder to build within uh, a reasonable amount of time. Uh, material shortages and so forth, most of those are figured out, but a lot of those material costs haven't decreased uh, in the way that most probably builders and the and uh, and home buyers would would appreciate, and so that's another thing that I believe going into the next year that is going to be a struggle for many is that not only is it harder for builders to build within an affordable price range because I don't believe they're making the money that everybody thinks they are. I think with uh, GST, I guess the GST factor would make a big difference if the province decided to actually correct that. In 2015, I think 2015, 2016, um, GST, uh, the, sorry, the PST wasn't included on the, so I made a mistake there, let's correct that. Um, so the PST wasn't included on the building side of real estate which we had a lot more builders at that time. So a lot of smaller builders, anybody building two, three, even up to like 15 houses, once that 
PST came into effect, a lot of those builders just couldn't afford to build anymore. So that might be something that we'd look at um, changing within our within our community and would make a, a big factor. And none of the things I'm talking about is political either one way or the other. It's actually just different things that I've seen happen in 20 years of real estate would actually make a huge impact into us being able to build more houses probably for an affordable price. So that would be the, the major one is the PST effect. Uh, another one would be um, actually when you look at homelessness, homelessness is another issue that we have um, because that affects a lot of different people and rentals and so forth, uh, the CIS program. So what happened back in the day is that the government would directly pay people that were on welfare uh, their landlords so that they got the direct check from the government that was taken away and that's actually ended ended up creating more homelessness because a lot of these people before um, were able to get their the rent paid so then they weren't getting evicted because their landlord was paid I've actually had many people that are actually investors ask that it come from different provinces and say, isn't there some kind of a program where we can get directly paid by the government? Um, which is actually quite common in many different provinces within uh, Canada, but we decided to, to take that away. That is something that a lot of people have discussed uh, would be helpful for homelessness and also for the people that are being able to uh, rent their property. So many people that have owned rental properties over the last decade or two uh, have decided to sell their properties because this keeps on happening to where they're not getting paid the rent and so forth. If you take into consideration the food costs, just, just one thing, food costs has almost doubled within the last three to four years. And so if somebody has, um, I guess, an opportunity to either feed their kids or pay their rent, I mean, feeding their kids would probably be something that uh, they would uh, be a priority. So I think when myself personally, I mean, I, I care about our city, I care about our people, our clients and so forth. I think those would be two huge factors which would actually change the game. PST on new builds and builders and then the SIF program directly paying landlords uh, their rent. I think those would be two huge factors. And it, it's interesting because in our um, city, when we're, when we're, uh, I guess, voting in, uh, I, I guess, a new mayor, I never heard any of those things being talked about. And I mean, uh, again, this is not, it's not political. It's just something that would help us better our community and I think make things more affordable. So those are things that I continually to think about is how do we make this better for everybody within our community? Um, because I believe that we're not here just as realtors to help people find properties, but we're hopefully here to help uh, navigate um, and find solutions for everybody. And I still have a lot to learn within kind of the, the options that, that are out there, but I, I do believe that we care and we, uh, we want to make a difference. So, um, so w with that being said, I, I want to thank you for, for tuning in to our podcast once again. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook. And if you have any questions or any kind of topics that you'd love us to cover, please just message us and uh, we'd be happy to cover uh, anything that you're interested in. So thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.